of order. Can everyone please stand for the flag salute? Chief Cahill, will you please lead us? Pledge of Allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag. flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. to the Republic of the United States, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and, and justice, justice for, all. for all. Okay, Lisa, roll call, please. Commissioner Kreeble? Here. Commissioner Langraff? Here. Mayor Holtzman? Here. Pursuant to the Open Public's Meeting Act, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in accordance with the law. We do not have any presentations tonight. We don't have any department head uh, reports, nor do we have any capital. I don't want that on. I, I want the people on, Jim. Hold on. I don't want the agenda on. How do I get okay. rid of it? Well, I'd have to get rid of it. I got it. Okay. I'm good. I'm good. I figured it out. Okay. okay. Sorry. Um, for anybody out there in, uh, in the audience, um, we go through a workshop portion of the meeting and, at, and we discuss things that we're gonna be voting on. We close that, we open our regular meeting and then we vote on them. There will be two public comment portions. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna vote on this evening are the minutes from December 9th, 2021 and December 21st, 2021. Lise, were all of the, was the whole commission there for both meetings? No, Mayor, I'm sorry, they, you were absent for both of those meetings. Okay, good to know. No, me. Okay. So, next, we do not have any uh, ordinances to introduce tonight, nor do we have any public hearings or adoption of ordinances. So, we will jump to the resolutions that we will be uh, voting on by consent and their resolutions 2022-066 through 2022-077. How about that, 6677, okay. Anyway, uh, I, I like things like that with numbers, I'm sorry. The first resol, I'm gonna go through it, Commissioner Landgraf and, and, and Commissioner Creeble. I have a, a few notes uh, that you guys can answer. And uh, if you guys have anything you wanna say, just stop me, okay? Okay. Okay. First one is 2022-006. That's approving the promotion of Dina Cavalieri to assistant construction officer. So the just next real quick, Beth, just on this yeah. one, and, and this goes for all of these, the, the promotions in public works and code. Um, these are positions that they've been in. They've right. either qualified up to them through civil, the, service. Um, civil service or it's, it's getting them right sized for the job that they've been doing for quite some time. You'll exactly. see that a lot with like Gary Rothman, right. um, Mike Wireback, those guys, they've been doing that job. It's right. just when we had the, the uh, desk audits, uh, right. civil Listen, service, right. we put everybody in a right spot. So right. Just, I won't this say that for every one of them, but that's basically what these are. Right. Exactly. Okay, so uh, that's when we had the consultant that was thirty a thirty year uh, vet a veteran from the state civil service department. Correct, Cynthia. Cindy. Right. Okay. Yep. So the next is twenty twenty two dash zero six seven, and that's approving the promotion of Brian Reeves to equipment operator. The next is twenty twenty two twenty twenty two dash zero six eight, approving the promotion of Gary Rothman to equipment operator. The next is 2022-069, approving the promotion of Michael Wireback to equipment operator. The next is 2022-070, and that is authorizing hiring Matthew Spires as firefighter for the city of Vetner. I'm really excited about this. Like I didn't realize it till today. I know he's been on our beach patrol and he's been on the um, civil service list for the fire department and was, um, anxiously awaiting his chance to get on. So, and I think uh, Chief Cahill, you made a great decision because I think he's um, he's a very stellar young man. I agree. You do good. Next is 2022-071, authorizing a refund for a tax overpayment. The next is 2022-072, authorizing the purchasing agent to prepare plan specifications and publicly bid general repairs and co construction of utilities on an ad needs basis, emergency basis for the city of Ventnor. My question to you, Al, is when we do this, are we doing this where we're gonna put it out for bid and there'll be one company or are we gonna have a pool of companies? 
we're going to do one company at this point. And that's what we usually did before. Last time was Arthur Henry. Okay. But you really okay. emergency stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so we only, no, so it's, it, it's one company. It's not going to be a pool. No, right. correct. Okay. Thank you. The next is, um, where am I? 2022-073, and that's authorizing the purchasing agent to prepare plan specification and publicly bid information technology services for the city of Ventnor. Can somebody give me specifics on that? What exact, what services are we looking for? Um, well, basically for this, for this services is for, uh, for any uh, long-term technology projects that we're gonna do for the city. Um, his, assist Jim, be on call 24-7. Uh, that kind of that kind of that kind of information. Um, okay, mm -hmm. I got you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The next is 2022-074, and that's authorizing the closing of the boat ramp and authorizing no parking at Ski Beach and surrounding street from Wednesday, <laughs> September 14th, 2022, to Tuesday, September 20th, for the Down Beach Seafood Festival, which is a great event. Yep. Okay, the next one is 2022-075, and that's accepting the retirement of Michael Barini. He was yours, right, Chief? Yes, he uh, was injured and uh, is taking a medical retirement due to his injury after 16 years of uh, very good service. So Sorry wish him the best. Him. And, uh, yes, wish him the best. Sorry to see him go. Absolutely. The next is 2022-076, authorizing no parking and suspension of open containers during the concerts we have this summer. The next is 2022-077, authorizing uh, a memorandum of agreement between the city of Ventnor and um, uh, the public works employee represented by Teamsters Local Union number 929. And that's in reference to um, converting some of their vacation time over to comp time. However, the comp time rate stays at the rate of when they earned it, it will not grow. So it will not financially hurt the city. And that's because of um, hours worked and um, things out of our control, correct? Right. Yes. Okay. The next is approval of bills and payroll. I have, I have one question, Mayor, if I could. Uh, sure. I thought I had the retirement of Greg Mano on for tonight, or is that is that the next meeting? Uh, Lance, that was <clears throat> that was done. Um, commission accepted that retirement. Okay. Uh, right. Maybe a month or so ago, but okay. I'll uh, put it in. I'll I'll speak about Greg in my commissioner comments. Then. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. My and, and I, before we move on, I just want to say real briefly that uh, the retirement is uh, the Barini is being filled by our new hire and also that our new spears and that our new hire is already an EMT. So there's, uh, it's a good, it's a good decision on not just because he's a quality person, but I think it's a good decision for the department as well. Thank Agreed. you. Agreed. Agreed. Then we will have uh, approval of our bills and payroll. And um, I don't think we have any listed discussion items. So uh, I, uh, Commissioner Landgraf and Commissioner Creevel, is it, you okay with me um, discussing the item that I wanted to discuss tonight? Actually, I wanted to just bring to the attention of the public our yeah, ordinance nice. on our, on dogs. Sure. Okay, so um, I hope Nanette's out there and she can write fast. You know, the city of Ventnor does. Of course, we have ordinances, and um, maybe some people are unaware of them. Maybe they're not. I don't know. But uh, in reference to do are the ordinances on dogs. Uh, and in light of uh, one is too many, but there were several dog-on-dog uh, -dog attacks last year, uh, all the way up until not long ago. So one of my pet peeves from the day we went into office was that people don't seem to want to get their dogs licensed. Um, to date, there's 140 licenses out there. Now, I know uh, when we walked the streets our first campaign, I dare to say there's, I know there's even more than a thousand dogs because uh, you guys called me the dog whisperer because I kept getting hemmed up at houses, pet dogs. A lot of dogs have, a lot of homes have two dogs. The importance of a license is, is not to put a burden on the owner. The importance is 
to get a license for your dog, they have to be vaccinated and they have to be current with their rabies vaccination. That to me is very important for the welfare of the residents, uh, visitors, as well as other animals, especially other canines, you know. So um, we are gonna start enforcing. And also there's a few other things in that, res in that ordinance that people seem to um, not know about or choose to ignore. <clears throat> dogs have to be on a leash. Dogs have to be on the leash. Dogs are not ever allowed on the boardwalk. And that's a real simple reason because if they decide to go to the bathroom, it is a mess and it's not a place for dogs. We have enough activity. We have walkers, runners, bikers. So the dogs are never to be allowed. They're not allowed on the boardwalk. They are allowed on the beach. Right now they're allowed around the clock at the water's edge and come the summertime, we do seven to nine at night, same at the water's edge. So the do dogs being on the leash and dogs being licensed, we are going to start enforcing. Um, I know uh, Will Reynolds is on and Mark Nemad, and they can jump in um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but if um, we find out that a dog is not licensed, uh, when we start enforcing it, they can be charged a fee up to $50. I feel that we go to the $50, and I think it's a statute uh, from the state that it, that's as high as you can go, $50. However, once they get that summons, they can get a summons every day after that. It's another summons. It's another violation for another 50 another 50 uh, And, uh, Will, is, um, is there a limit of $2,000? So uh, thank you, Mayor. Ultimately, there is no limit of $2,000. That, that's actually the general uh, ordinance for a summons where the fine can be up to $2,000. If, if they're being fined each and every day, there is no cap on a $50 okay, okay. limit. So okay. if they were, if they did say they had a dog who was involved in a, in a altercation with another dog and that dog was unlicensed, right, and off right, the lease. Right the unlicensed dog and the person who owns that dog would be in violation each and every day, $50, no cap. Until they get licensed. That is correct. Okay. And then there's also, and I'm not sure exactly the amount, but there is a summons and a, and a fine for dogs off their leash. That is correct. So that's dog at large. And then there's yes. also a separate summons for uh, vicious dog. And Mayor, you, you referenced, uh, some incidences where there's dog on dog attacks. I mediated one while I was still the prosecutor involving uh, neighborly disputes. And I was trying to actually get an agreement as to, uh, you know, an arrangement between the parties. So there were neighbors and then people walking by the one uh, person's house and the dog had come from a big farm to a small property in Ventnor. And that dog was acting out because it wasn't used to being in a small, you know, fenced in yard. And ultim right. ultimately, what, what we did in that particular case was we referred them to community mediation. And, and uh, that's when the court went to the central court. But the, the threat of that was up to $2,000 for the dog at large and up to $2,000 for the dog, you know, vicious <laughs> dog. So that's really right. where the hammer is if there is an altercation between, between you know, animals. So, right. Yeah. And I think so. I, I want the message to the public is. Um, the ordinance on the books referencing dogs, you know, being leashed, being licensed. I mean, to date, we have 140 uh, dogs being licensed that, I mean, that have licenses. And I'm telling you, there's, I know there's well over a thousand. I would, I would dare to say there's more closer to two. Cause I know we, when we went door to door, how I'm many agreed. dogs, I mean, so, and we've never had more than over the last couple of years, it's been 300, 350. So, I know it's, ten, it's ja due January 1st. I know the dog who has number one every year, his, uh, his name is Boomer. And um, it's only, it's $10. And Lisa, the late fee jumps it to um, what? So as of March 1st, if there's a $10 late fee. So for a, for a normal license for a dog that's been spayed or neutered, it would be 10 plus an additional 10. So it'd be okay. a total of $20 come March 1st. Right. So um people have um, a little bit of time to get in there before they get hit with the late fee and i suggest everyone in ventner be responsible i have two dogs if i had my way i would live on a farm and probably have a hundred dogs because i love them but um 
they're an animal and we want to make sure that they're all, they are protected. Uh, and also, especially, um, people and children. So, um, lic the license is very important. And it, um, it's also important when we have our first responders go into someone's home, whether it be our fire department, our police department, uh, and there's dogs in there. I mean, you know, adult, strangers coming into their house in uniform. I mean, it, it's, it, it could be, um, we're putting our uh, first responders at risk. So, I mean, I had a mayor, I had a resident reach out to me yesterday about a, a barking dog in the neighborhood. Um, I reported it to code and to PD and they indicated to me, I guess through Lisa's office, they found out that that address did not have a licensed dog. So now that resident will be fined the $50 fine for not getting a license for their dog. And they will be warned that if the dog continues to disturb the neighborhood, you can't have a dog that barks all day long. No, There's because the dog's the dog, There's something going on with the dog. You, you have to stop the continuous barking. So right. that's a noise violation. And that can right. also be a violation under that same ordinance. Right. And, and mayor, if I could intervene one other thing, uh, yes. and this is, the, this is the lawyer in me, it really comes down to a liability situation as well as uh, an ability to track, you know, if there is a problem with that dog, if that particular dog did attack somebody, there could be a potential personal injury lawsuit, whether it's a first responder, a neighbor, a child. And really that, that protects everyone because if we know who the dog is, then the city can then take action. And if we need to, to notify someone, whether it's, you know, the SBCA or what have you, there's right. many, many issues that come up involving dogs. I've been a municipal prosecutor for 10 years. I can tell you, I handle more dog cases than you ever would want to imagine. And sure. if they're tracked, then the city can then understand what the situation is. If they're not tracked, you're in, you're in the dark. So exactly. So, you know, my message as well as from the whole commission is um, we're at, you know, we're asking the residents to be responsible follow the ordinance if you have a dog to do whatever you to get it licensed keep it on a leash and do what is expected of you i mean it's as simple as that so um hopefully nanette will have a um a nice little story on that well, we okay? should also and, put it out on our own social media and our yeah. website yes our website and our, and our facebook page yeah, let's get it out there yeah, yeah. so so I did briefly meet with Chief Fussner on this. He had some other uh, ideas that we can roll out to do the tracking that Wheels had mentioned. But we do have a post today, actually, on our Facebook page that says, on a positive note, that, that, that there are free rabies shots that are be granted to all Ventnor residents that have a valid 2022 license. So that... That is, uh, they're now due and they can be renewed. So, you, uh, and then there's also a link there for the license application and all the contact numbers, Lisa's email address. So we try to make it as easy as possible, uh, but we, um, but uh, this, so this, this uh, free rabies clinic is February 19th from 10 to 12 at um, Firehouse on New Haven and Winchester, Firehouse number one. So they, they don't even have to. It's not, there's Boomer, they don't have to pay because I know when you go to the vet they, uh, to get to get your dog vaccinated, they also charge you for a office visit. So, right. so this is know, free. Yeah, this is free. So it's available. We make it available. I think one year we didn't because of COVID. It's available to the veterinary residents. Um, one other thing real quick though, um, uh, Bill or Mark, correct me if I'm wrong. A dog needs to be licensed. However, it, we have a lot of second homeowners. As long as they have, as long as their dog is licensed from their primary address, whether it be Pennsylvania, New York, somewhere else in New Jersey, as long as the dog has a valid license, th that's good. Am I correct? That's correct, Mayor. Right. That's they correct. Don't need, they don't need to have a license for veterinary. As long as the dog is licensed wherever they come from, because I know we do have a lot of second homeowners or visitors that come with their dog. So I want to make sure that's clear that, that, that the message doesn't get uh, misconstrued where they got to get their dog licensed here as well as wherever else they live. So I just wanted to add that. I think we're, I think I covered it all. Yes. Sure. Mayor, when, during, when you said you're out campaigning and saw the thousand dogs, were they calling you the dog whisperer or the fur whisperer? No, they call me the dog whisperer dog. because, okay. because I would be... I would be two houses down 
petting dogs and Lance and Tim would be saying, come on, Beth, come on, Beth. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, hands down, I, I, I'm telling you, there's got to be at least 2,000 dogs living in Ventnor. So Easy. Beth, has, the mayor has a trick. This is how she gets dogs to love her. She gives them potato chips. I only do that to Boomer. <laughs> No, I love dogs, and I think dogs sense the people that 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 like love dogs. I do. So I, mean, I got two right now. One's laying on my bed like he's the king. Anyway, um, I do. I think they're more. Lo- you know, I'll leave it alone. I just think they're great. And like I said, if I could, I would have a hundred. But you have to be responsible. So, okay. So we'll move on to the next part of our meeting, which is the public portion. If there's anyone out there that would like to speak on anything that we mentioned that we will be voting on tonight, this would be the time. So do I have a motion to open public portion? I'll make that motion, Mayor. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll make the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Where are you going, Tim? Sorry. (laughs) I seconded. (laughs) You muted, seconded. Okay. Uh, Jim? Is there anybody in the audience who wishes to speak or discuss any of the items that are being voted on tonight? Please make yourself known within Zoom by raising your hand or within the chat feature and you'll be recognized. Once you're recognized, you'll give your name and address and speak to the commissioners. I don't see anyone. Thank you. Do I have a motion to close public portion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Do I have a motion to close the workshop portion of the meeting and call to order our regular meeting? I'll make that motion as well. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do I have a motion to approve minutes of Mm -hmm. December 9th, 2021 and December 21st, 2021? Motion to approve minutes. Do I have a second? Second the motion. Lisa, roll call, please. Commissioner Creeble? Yes. Commissioner Landgraf? Yes. Mayor Holtzman? Abstain. We do not have any ordinances to introduce. We do not have any public hearings. uh, And we do not have any adoptions of ordinances. So do I have a motion? Do I have a motion to adopt the resolutions 2022-66 through 2022-77 by consent? I'll make that motion as stated by the mayor. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second the motion. Lisa, roll call, please. Commissioner Creeble? Yes. Commissioner Landgraf? Yes. Mayor Holtzman? Yes. Uh, Al, can you please give us our bills and payrolls for this period? Yes. Uh, the bill list for this period is $1,882,817.47. And the payroll for this period is $599,318.15. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve bills and payroll stated from our CFO? So moved. Do I have a second? Second the motion. Lisa, roll call, please. Commissioner Creeble? Yes. Commissioner Landgraf? Yes. Mayor Holtzman? Yes. Uh, announcements, public, uh, I mean, safety report, we have if needed. So we will jump down to the commissioner comments and reports. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Commissioner um, Creeble, you want to go first? I'll do alpha order. Sure. Um, I do have a couple things. Uh, first, I want to make mention of a notable passing. Uh, Dr. Bernie Zapp was um, not just a great resident. He was a friend. Of, um, he uh, was a member of the Viking Rowing Club, but uh, he supported us during our campaign, actually. Um, he was a very, um, very giving person. Uh, he also has, the, uh, had, a home, has a home, had a home uh, called Derby Hall. Uh, it was a historic home. Um, I had the privilege of working with him in that home for years on just about almost every room. But um, and his generosity and his uh, his personality will be deeply missed here in Vendor. He was a great guy. He had just a great a sense of humor too. Yeah. So I, just wanted- I actually met him when when we were at uh, Vagabond one night, and we were talking just talking Ventner stuff, and he grabbed Kathy's hand and, and started mm-hmm. dancing in the middle of the floor with her. And yeah. it was great. Great, it was, it was, great personality. Yeah, he, will, he will be, he will be missed in our community. He had a great outlook on life and, and, a, yeah. and, a, and, a, and yeah, just a good person to spend time with. Agreed. I agree. 
Um, the uh, we did have a, 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 a notable event of fire structure fire at 6812 Vendor Avenue, also known as White Star Liquor. Um, in a matter of uh, we responded and we're there. Chief Cahill's here on the call, I believe, still. Uh, in a matter of three minutes, uh, arrival and it was quite a quite a uh, quite a showing of um, of uh, force there quickly. Engine one, Quint one, truck one, rescue one, engine two, car one and two. Margate was the second alarm that was struck, which arrived with Quint twenty four and four firefighters, Chief Adams and their accountability officer. Gas and electric companies were notified and arrived. Um, all this happened very quickly and very efficiently. Um, and then, uh, and then the, uh, uh, and then it just cascaded from there. Um, Atlantic city fire, uh, came to cover towards the end and fire marshal, um, uh, Atlantic city uh, relieved to do some cleanup, uh, our things that we share, like the cascade unit that keeps our, our firefighters, uh, supplied with oxygen was used. Um, and it was a pretty, it was, it was a, it was, it was a pretty serious scene. Luckily it was uh, not a lot of traffic, but, um, uh, um, I, I just want to thank the fire department and chief Cahill for the, the efficiency of that, that, of keeping everybody safe. There was an injured firefighter, um, that, uh, in the, in the, um, but, um, other than that, considering, um, the, the complexity of the building, it was a, it was a good, a, a good stop and, um, was it one of our firefighters, building. Tim? Sorry? Was it one of ours? Yes. Yes, it was one of ours. He uh, broke his hand. Um, and it, it's a, it was a cold night. It was a difficult uh, door to, uh, I think he was trying to break down a door um, at that point. Um, so, uh, so, uh, so we appreciate his, his work there. If you have anything else to add, Chief? I, well, I'd just like to add that, I mean, I think Chief Cahill and, and, and our depart, veteran department, of course, I can say you can say I'm biased, I think is great. But I also think that the work that Chief Cahill has done with the neighboring communities and the mutual aid, um, it just just how you describe what happened from, from, from our department and then Margate and then Atlantic City and how everything just worked like a well-oiled machine. I, I, got to give a lot of credit to Chief Cahill for a lot of his uh, networking and outreaching with our neighboring communities. Yeah. Was it the police that originally um, saw the smoke? Is that where it, uh, the call came in? A, a neighbor called it in. Uh, police saw it and called right away and gave us a real quick view of what it was yeah. and it hastened our response. And also Longport was on scene too. That's right. Longport fire. But the... Um, um, uh, uh, Sundays was not damaged uh, other than smoke. Um, it was, seems minimal from what he says. So that, that whole building was, uh, which is connected was, uh, no damage to those other businesses, which was uh, lost. Did I lose you? Yeah. Oh, good okay. job was done by all. And right. Longport and Longport, they're volunteer firemen. That's right. They are, and uh, I didn't realize it till after the fire was under control and I was cutting Longport loose that my son had responded with them. He's a volunteer now. <laughs> it's not yeah. often to get to work with your kid at a fire. That's great. Small, small Good work family. by all, Chief. Please yeah. thank the guys for us. Yes. I, um, I was out and about town and uh, got to see the trucks getting there, but um, glad everybody's safe. Hope uh, the one fireman heals quickly. Yeah, Thanks he's going to be out for a month or two. He broke his hand pretty good. Mm. Yep. Yep. But he's young, he'll heal. Right. <laughs> Tend to do that. Tim, a uh, uh, couple, couple more things, real quick. Um, yeah. There are, uh, are, just to keep an eye on our website, the Vendor City Special Events is, is uh, the events are fairly well locked in. There are some notable things coming up. Uh, March 17th is Ventner's 119th birthday. And there'll be a cupcake giveaway at City Hall at 10 a.m. First come, first serve. A little birthday celebration for the city. Um, and then there are some big events coming up. So just keep that uh, in mind. The block party on May 7th. The rock and roll marathon, which is 10,000 runners through the city. Um, that is on May 15th. And then, um, of course, the concert series runs throughout on Wednesdays and Saturdays. And the Seafood Festival uh, kind of caps the year 
um, uh, and then the, uh, at the end of this in September. So keep an eye on that. You missed have, a special. You missed a special event in May. Uh, in May, the yeah. Chef's Night Out. Then there's one other one. Mayor's birthday. Mayor's birthday. I, was, I turned sixty this year. Okay. <laughs> I'm teasing and, you. Too. And the, and the mayor's birthday, which we will we will close the streets for and have a. <laughs> you can do a dunk tank. There you go. There, there you, you go. go. Um, and then my last piece, uh, if Jim, you could just give me um, sharing capability. I already did. Okay, thank you. Um, so our we have a. Uh, let's see here. Here we go. Oh yeah, and then in the fall, Tim, don't forget we have our spaghetti dinner in October. Right. Thanks, Nanette. Nanette. <laughs> Let me just. Oops, sorry, I got some work up here. Um, where'd it go? Here we go. Um, it was the best, Nanette. Might have to drag it to another screen, Tim. If oh, you got there it is. Screens open. Yeah, here it is. So are you seeing this? Uh, so I have this video that's going to happen from. Um, everybody catching this? Yep. Yes, I see. Yep. Every year, thousands of visitors call the Ventnor City Boardwalk their happy place. It's where they take their solo morning run and meet with friends for a memorable evening stroll. It's 1.7 miles packed with a million memories. And if your company's brand is important to those who frequent this unique slice of paradise, there's no better place to remind them that you're open for business with your very own Boardwalk banner app. Of course, the centerpiece of our beloved city is the iconic Boardwalk. And new this year, in addition to the enormously popular Boardwalk banner program, is the opportunity to advertise your brand in our vibrant Bedner Avenue business districts and other high visibility locations, including Bedner Heights the gateway to our thriving city. We invite you to join us on this exciting mission as we continue to strengthen our dynamic business community. Contact us today to advertise your business brand. Together, let's make this another banner year. BenderCityAds.com. Contact us today to reserve your prime advertising location. Nice. There I, like I like it. it. Right? I like Very it cool. Lot. Thanks, Jim. Like it. Very cool. Very nice. So uh, that was done by our uh, second year of the, of the advertising campaign. It was sold out, I believe, last year. And yeah. uh, a lot of people are already booking the second year. It was very successful. And we hope to expand it to other areas. So great. Cool. Yeah. Good I mean, work. Yeah, very nice. Good work. Great, great. Um, Tim? That's, is that it? That's it. Yes. Thank okay. you. So I'll move on to Commissioner Creeble. I mean, Commissioner Langrath, Lance. Okay, thanks. Um, so I kind of jumped ahead from, from the meeting before uh, where uh, Greg Mano has retired. Uh, just wanted to you know, thank him for his, his 16 years of, of work for the city. Uh, Greg's chosen to retire out of our water department. He'll be greatly missed. He, he was a pump operator for most of those 16 years. Um, from what the staff was telling me, I never got to see his cowboy hats, but he's He's well known for his cowboy hats around public works. So he will be missed. We wish him the best. I think I joined all the public works team wishing him the best in retirement. So good luck to you, Greg, and, and please take care. Um, up to just up to date on a few things. Uh, I've set up a meeting. It took us a while uh, to get a meeting together with Senator Palestina, Swift and Guardian, and Assembly persons uh, Swift and Guardian. I'm trying to talk to them about a few issues. One that we're really focused on right now is the new state flood regulations. Um, they are a bit aggressive. Uh, we have to adopt them. We are going to look to negotiate some things out of those requirements where one specifically is automatic uh, escalation of flood elevation requirements through when DEP decides it's time to do that. Uh, we, we want to be able to review that each time that they decide to do that. So we're going to talk to Senator Palestina and, and, and the assembly persons to get some input on that. We've got a draft of that ordinance that we've worked with through Ed Stinson, Jim Rutella, uh, Dino Cavalieri, and our team in the city of things that, that we want to put in it, 
and, and things that we want to take out. I will say this, that you know, we were very progressive in changing one of the rules that has benefited our community immensely. Um, if you heard a couple of months ago, we talked about the amount of uh, renovations to homes in our city at the $13.5 million mark for 2021. Uh, that would not have been um, able to be accomplished. And we would have had a lot of homes torn down uh, like our surrounding communities have. Um, you know, we like to try and keep these homes, these older homes that we have in our community. Granted, the new homes are beautiful, but you know, trying to keep some of the old character. And what we did as a, as a governing body was we amended our flood regulations to allow you to you know, look, the look back as a year on doing renovations to your home. Where, and where that's important is if you look back longer than that and you, you have a couple of projects in a home, you now have to make that home flood compliant. Um, just to do a renovation on your property. Um, you know, if you exceed half the home's value, you have to now make it flood compliant. A lot of our homes in the community have basements. You would lose that um, if you have to be flood compliant. You have to backfill that basement um, or you'd have to elevate your home in some manner. So now a lot of the other communities are seeing what we did six, almost six years ago now, and they're starting to do the same thing. Um, so it, it's we were ahead of the curve in that. And I think it's helped our community preserve some of these old homes and, and allow people to renovate these, these great properties. I, I really um, didn't think about it in that way, Lance, just to, just to, uh, that, that it really create, created a balance so that not everybody that can build new, it gives yep. a balance to the wider public that can renovate. So um, that's a Agreed. great, that's a great, that's a great, uh, great, great asset. Yep. Um, just wanted to, we, we haven't had a meeting since the, the last snowstorm, the bigger one. Uh, kudos to the Public Works guys. They worked around the clock. Very difficult storm. Um, I think the total was 16, 17 inches down here uh, along the shoreline. Uh, blowing snow, very light snow. That becomes problematic for our guys. Um, working with PD, Fire Department, and Public Works, I mean, they did the best they could. And, and Chief put out, Chief Cahill put out a, a notice, and, and I think um, Nanette picked it up in, in the downbeach.com. Uh, you know, our, our goal, and not even our goal, our requirement and our, our responsibility is to get our emergency vehicles throughout town. When there's an emergency, we have to have those roads, the main roads clear to get them and their vehicles to that site, whether it be police vehicles or fire or other emergency type vehicles, ambulances or whatever. Um, that is our main goal. That's why we focus on Atlantic, Ventnor, Winchester, and Monmouth, Dorset, Wellington. Uh, we then come back and we try to hit the side streets. Um, Chief's Post, if you can find it again on Down Beach, it, it was really poignant, right to the point. Um, our side streets are small. Uh, City Engineer and Public Works Superintendent Ed Stinson is going to look at a plan for, for next year where we do a, an odd even parking when, when there's a snowstorm. Uh, the city of Pittsburgh does it. Uh, I've talked to some people who grew up out there and, and it works. So on an odd day, you park on the odd side of the street. If the snowstorm hits that day, we can clean that side of the street and then you flip it. Um, we need that on some of these smaller streets. Sacramento is one of the most difficult side streets to plow. Um, Harvard's one of them because it's just so tiny here on the island. Um, it's just a narrow street. So we're, it's a work in progress, but I wanted to really thank the guys they worked for, I don't know how many exact hours, but through the night, you know, 24 hour shift, getting the work done. And I, and I want to thank them for that. They did a great uh, job. They did yeah, a great job. Agreed. Thanks. And, and it's starting to be recognized. You know, we see some of the comments um, on some of the social media where, you know, they didn't plow my street for this, that, and the other thing. And, and then our own residents are coming back and, and, and supporting our guys, which is really good to see. Really yes. good to see. Um, some of the construction projects that are going on, we've got some major utility work happening on Baltimore, Lafayette, and Wyoming, uh, sewer lines and water lines, their utilities going in and there, um, having some issues with pipe and some of the supplies as everybody else in the world, but we're working towards getting those projects finished up before the spring and into the summer. Um, I think we've got some concrete work going around town as well, still finishing up things from gas line work before streets are paved when the weather gets warmer. Um, so you'll see those, those items happening around town as well. Um, 
some big news on the third liquor license. And, and I know Commissioner Kreeble was on that hearing. Uh, the planning board approved the ocean draft um, right next to Sapore on that vacant lot. Um, really cool idea they came up with there. It's mostly outdoor space um, with a, you know, maybe a hat tip to the pandemic a little bit, being able to serve outside uh, as, as things move on. And people want to be outside. We're at the shore. We want to be outside. Um, so hopefully that gets started soon and we get to see some of that this summer. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. You're muted. I guess that would help, huh? <laughs> okay. So next is our second public uh, portion comment for anyone out there. This is something, this is the part where you can speak about anything that you would like. We usually like to keep it to a three minute limit. Um, if you do want to speak, you have to get name, give your name and your address. So do I have a motion to open the public comment? So moved. Do I have a second? Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Jim? Everybody from the public who wishes to speak on any items, please make yourself known within Zoom by raising your hand or within the chat feature, and you'll be recognized. Once recognized, you give your name and address, and you may speak and question the commission. No takers. Okay. Do I have a motion to close public comment? So moved. Do I have a second? I'll second it. All in second favor? Motion. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 We do not have an executive session tonight. Am I correct? That's correct. Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? I will second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Everyone's Thanks, everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night. Take care. Stay safe.